until one particular day. And I just want to add this on here to show the reality of the spirit realm, the demonic world, the reality of that world. One particular day, I, I was by myself and I, I decided to ask it, how long is this going to take before I see the success? And I will never forget this, Ken. Um, that thing began to move on its own while my hands, I mean, I, I remember I felt this, I felt this turning in my stomach first. I felt this turning in my stomach first. And when I felt this turning in my stomach, I could not explain it, but I had my hands on the on the little piece that moves. And all of a sudden that thing began to move on its own. It shocked me. It shocked me. Oh my God, it shocked me. And it scared the living daylights out of me to the point where I knocked it off my lap. And now um, it's really began to sink in. What have I done? What have I conjured up? What have I opened myself up to? Well, welcome to another episode of Encounters with God, folks. Uh, we have a very special guest today. We have Pastor Laron Bledsoe with us. And I came across Laron. He has just got an incredible story about the delivering power of God, God's love being manifested to him uh, when he was running from God, when he knew that the call of God was on his life. Uh, uh, Ron was involved some, to, with some things that were, I, I guess, mildly, I could say pretty wicked. Laron, would that be correct? That would be absolutely correct. All right. Well, I appreciate you coming on the, the show today, Laron. I appreciate you having me as a guest, Ken. Thank you so much for the opportunity. Yes. So let, let's start at the beginning, Laurent. Were you uh, raised in a Christian household? Uh, how was your upbringing and how, how were you brought up? So I wasn't raised in a Christian household particularly, although uh, I had family who was involved in church. Everyone in my family uh, had some kind of recollection of who God is and who God was. Um, but in my particular household, no one was saved at that particular time when I began to have issues. So you were young uh, in the beginning. Uh, Y'all kind of had it all going on. I think your dad was uh, selling drugs. and um, But life was good for a while, wasn't it? Life was great. We uh, didn't want for anything. As you mentioned, he was uh, dealing drugs. Uh, selling drugs, and he also had an amazing job. Uh, so he was working and selling drugs. Um, we had a, a great life at that time. Uh, they had just purchased a home. Um, we didn't want for anything. Christmas was always nice. We had gifts upstairs, downstairs. I mean, we didn't want for anything, and, and uh, we were somewhat small brats. Yeah, you kind of living the American dream, weren't you? Exactly, exactly. And uh, so things began to take a turn um, when my dad began to abuse the drugs that he was selling. And uh, that's when everything began to crumble. So we went from having everything we could want at that particular time to going down to basically nothing, lost the cars, lost the house. Mm -hmm. uh, be before we even lost the house, I remember... Um, being in there with no electric, no gas, no water. Uh, there were times that we would have to take a bucket to our neighbor's house next door to fill it up with water uh, just to have something to take a bath. Um, I remember that. So as things begin to, to spiral, you begin to, uh, as this began to happen to you, you kind of turn to a life of, uh, of, of crime. Yeah, I was already kind of in a crime written area, mm -hmm. but we were somewhat sheltered. Uh, but that's when um, I began to when we when we began to have these problems. When I lost when we lost our home, we had to move in with my grandparents, who there was already uh, people living there. But I began to act out in school. Right, I began to have these behaviors that my mother was struggling to understand. Uh, I got involved with gangs. I got involved with, with, with alcohol and drugs at 13 years old. Mm -hmm. And uh, 
it was the gang involvement that kind of uh, pushed me down a, a, a downward spiral because at the age of 13, uh, I brought a gun to school and uh, used that gun to open fire on a group of kids who were from a rival gang. Yeah. And uh, yeah, so I was arrested at 13, booked, uh, had some very serious uh, charges, as you can imagine, yeah. using a gun and opening fire on a group of individuals. Uh, there were a lot of kids and things out there. I'm actually, I believe it was a miracle of God that no one actually got hurt. Sure. Yeah. And uh, so 13 years old, that was on, I, I'll never forget that. That was on a Friday. Well, when I got back to school that Monday, the detectives were there because they had conducted an investigation. Uh, kids had mentioned my name. So they were there and they arrested me. And I went to a juvenile delinquency facility before being shipped off to a boy's home for a few years. And I uh, was in that boy's home and actually in the juvenile facility as well, where I began to get exposed to uh, rap music. There were a couple of guys who were uh, rappers who were in that facility at that time and kind of exposed me to writing my own lyrics. And I began to write. I've always been fond of writing. I've always been fond of poetry and have done stuff like that. But um, then when I got involved with writing uh, gangster rap lyrics, uh, kind of took 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 to it and uh, really began to get really good at it. So when I got out of that boys' home after a couple of years, I was really fond of a uh, gangster rap group uh, that came out around the same time that I came out of this boys' home, and their music was really different. It was really catchy. It was harmonizing. I mean, it, and and they were just taking the music industry by storm sure. and. Uh, began to get really fond of them and began to do research and found out that they had uh, reached out to a, a Ouija board and they made a deal with the devil uh, mm. through a Ouija board to become platinum selling artists, which they were at that time. And, and I thought to myself, Hey, if this is a way out, you know, at that time I was living in, in a poverty stricken area. If this is a way out, then I definitely, uh, would like to do that. I'm already writing uh, gangster rap lyrics. So I uh, began to listen to their music more and more. And believe it or not, they actually wrote a song called Mr. Ouija. And uh, we would listen to that song. When I say we, I'm talking about me and the friends and the group of people that I was involved with at that time. We would get high on marijuana and we would listen to this music. And um, the music was basically promoting witchcraft, occultism. Uh, obviously, the name of the song was Mr. Ouija. And mm -hmm. uh, so we went and found ourselves a Ouija board. And I would actually, from that point on, I began to have conversations in the dark uh, with the devil. In my, you know, at least, at least from my perspective, I would go into dark places and I would just speak in the atmosphere and say, well, you know, Satan, if you are there, uh, you know, I'm willing to give you my soul in exchange to become a gangster rap artist in, in exchange to become rich and famous. And I would do that periodically. And nothing really happened, um, you know, from that until one particular Thanksgiving Eve. So this particular Thanksgiving Eve and, and during this time, I'm continuing to write lyrics, uh, me and a, and a friend of mine. We had created a group and we were trying to go down the path of becoming gangster rap artists. So uh, I was on Thanksgiving Eve. I'll never forget it um, where I was leaving work and a young lady approached me and she wanted to buy some marijuana. And I said, sure, I'll take you to get it and uh, packed all my groceries up in her car. And we rode and got the marijuana and we were just riding around smoking. Well, what happened, uh, uh, the police was riding next to us. One was behind us and noticed that we were in there smoking marijuana. Uh, they could see through the windows. Mm -hmm. So they decided to pull us over. Uh, when they pulled me over, they pulled me to the back of the car. They were trying to find drugs, obviously. But here is the kicker. As I was back there with the light shining in my face, just like, man, I'm just ready for this to be over. 
there was a demonic presence that presented itself to me in my conscious and begin to have a audible conversation with me. First of all, it identified itself as Satan. Hmm. And um, and it began to play this lyric to me. This is, it's, it's, I try to explain it the best way I know how. I know it can be diffi difficult for those who may not understand, but it began to play this lyric to me. It was, it was this particular style. And it told me that it was going to give me this particular style, mm -hmm. uh, this particular lyric. It was it was very enchanting and that it heard me all those times that I was praying in the dark, praying, ironically, right? Praying in the dark mm -hmm. and talking out loud in the atmosphere. And Satan said he heard me and he was going to give me this particular rap style. And that all I had to do was continue to pursue the career. Uh, but he made it plain to me that you cannot back out of this. This is going to be for life. He also made it plain to me that, that you cannot expose me. You cannot tell others what's going on. or You cannot tell others about this relationship that you and I have. And I was, at that time, I was just so mesmerized by the lyrics that I was hearing and I couldn't wait for the opportunity to get in the studio and, and to, you know, try to repeat these lyrics that I heard. Well, to make a long story short, uh, the next day I ended up going home. But the next day I tried to repeat those lyrics the way that they were presented to me. I couldn't do it. Uh, I went and bought some marijuana to try to see if that was, you know, if that could do it. That didn't do it either. Yeah. So uh, after a couple of weeks, he you know, uh, came back to me when I wasn't expecting it. He came back into my conscious. He identified himself as Satan again. And he began to tell me that he was going to give me the words and the lyrics and things to write. And, and here's where it got real, because I would sit around in rooms with people and around my friends, and no one ever knew or suspected what I was dealing with. And I was somewhat excited because this is supernatural, right? This is... uh. To me, it was like, oh, wow, this is really happening. I've, I've actually conjured up something that is not of this world that is going to help me to overcome uh, these issues and these problems. You know, I'm, I'm making a deal at that time. I don't care about my soul. All I care about is becoming rich and famous. Sure. So he would come into my conscious uh, easily when I was under the influence of marijuana and Here's where it began to get real. Um, I began to hear the lyrics. I would write them down. But sometimes there were words that I never heard before. Mm -hmm. And I would have to look these words up. I mean, how am I coming up with words that I've never heard before? Mm -hmm. And when I look them up and found those words in the dictionary, actually at a dictionary at home, and I would go through that dictionary and say, these are real words. Mm -hmm. So I knew uh, that this was very satanic in my heart. I knew that this was something that was against the will of God, although I wasn't saved or I wasn't a Christian at that particular time, right? Yeah. So um, I'm, I'm writing these lyrics and, and what he would do is just enhance my ability. Uh, there would be times where I would be under the influence of marijuana and didn't have to write. I mean, I could just, what they call freestyle in the rap industry, I could just freestyle without missing a beat through the power of the demonic uh, sorcery mm -hmm. and the demonic spirits that I had opened myself up to. And um, so I, I'm pursuing the career at this time. I'm going to the studio, I'm laying tracks, I'm making tapes and putting them out on the street. I'm, I'm, I'm on the path to becoming somebody in this industry. And my mother ironically end up giving her life to Christ. And here's where everything began to take a change. Um, she came home one day and she had this, this glow about her, this change that you could literally see. And she told me that she had gotten saved and accepted Christ as a savior. So after that, I, I began, began to kind of get a little convicted, but I'm still desperate. I'm still like, well, that's just her. That's her life. I've got to make this money. I've got to do this, you know? So one particular night, I, I went home, went to sleep, and, and woke up around 5 a.m., 
and tried to go back to sleep and couldn't go back to sleep no matter how hard I tried. Turned on the television, because that's what we do normally when you can't go back to sleep at 5 a.m. Turned on the television and there was a cartoon in uh, that was on. So I said, well, let me just check this cartoon out. Never saw this cartoon before in my life. And it was this young boy was walking home from high school and all of a sudden he took an alley home and all of a sudden this guy appeared who had the head of a jack and lantern He had a cape on and um, he walked up to the young man. And he said, you know, how would you like to be popular? Hmm. And the young man said, I would want more than anything to be popular. And so he said, all I want you to do, you know, he, he had some kind of supernatural power. He created this guitar he handed it to him. He said, all I need you to do is to take this guitar and play it at school. Hmm. So the, the boy took it to school. He played it. He became popular overnight. So every time he would do this demonic spirits bidding, he would get a better guitar, right? So to make a long story short, the end result, he had got like five different guitars and he was a rock and roll star. He was rich. He was famous. And he was on stage. He went from being a nobody at high school to being a famous rock and roll star. And all he did was just play an electric guitar. So when he got to that point where he was finally on stage and the people were raving and hollering and screaming, his fans, all of a sudden, all of those people in the audience began to transform. Their faces began to transform into this pumpkin head looking guy. Uh, mm -hmm. And the boy kind of, he kind of was shocked and he's like, what's going on? And all of a sudden here comes Mr. Pumpkinhead on the stage. And he was like, this is what I wanted. And it was at that moment that the young boy realized he was merely used to deceive all of these people. So he kind of ran, ran away from stage and he was kind of weeping and he was regretful for his decision. Yeah. Amazing. So I was convicted in my heart and in my spirit because I felt that God was trying to get my attention. What are the odds of me, you know, waking up at 5 a.m., can't sleep and seeing this cartoon on television and it's basically playing my life? Yeah, that's kind of straight to you from the Lord, isn't it? Oh, man, there, there's no way to back out of that because hmm. I had told no one, I had told no one. I was just too ashamed to even share. So how do you tell people that you, you know, sold your soul? It, it, you know, so I didn't tell anyone what was going on. I didn't tell anyone about the demon that I, that would come into my head and give me the lyrics. I didn't tell anyone. Was this when you, uh, were you having sleep paralysis? I know that was an issue for you for a while, or was that later? When did that come along? Thank you for, for, for bringing that up. But that, that actually started, uh, back when I was maybe about five or six years old uh, is when sleep paralysis began to start for me, which kind of which which kind of opened me up to the spirit world, you know, because I I knew by these beings attacking me in my sleep, I knew that there that the spirit world was a reality. Uh, so sleep paralysis, right? So when I was around five or six. My first encounter was uh, I was me and my my brother had bunk beds and I was laying on the bunk bed and something literally jumped on my back. Hmm. Yeah. And when it jumped on my back, it, it pulled my spirit out of my body hmm. and it pulled me up into the ceiling. And in the background, I could hear these demonic chanting and this demonic laughter. I was literally looking down on my brother who was at the top bunk. I could mm -hmm. literally see him with his eyes closed and he was asleep. Mm -hmm. And I'm going through this, you know, up into the ceiling. And then I dropped back to the floor and I could feel the weight of something on my, on my back. I guess I was in a, in a spirit form and I could see myself sleep in the bed. And I tried to shake it off. I tried to shake whatever it was off. So finally I get back into my body. I wake up and I'm like, what was that about? Well, from that point on, I had I want I want to say the sleep paralysis happened to me almost every night from that point on in my life, even up into my deal with the devil. Um, That's really just an interesting study to look at that, how 
you know, it really confounds a lot of these scientists and doctors that people can be asleep and they can be hallucinating and, and there's, they can smell things that's in the room and, uh, you know, see these things happening. Um, yeah. but they can't move their bodies. Exactly. It's almost like they're frozen, but you know, so it is something spiritual. I think that, that goes on during this sleep paralysis when it's hard to explain scientifically. Yeah. You know, I've made other videos and I've had people come on in the comments and say, oh, it's just a medical uh, con condition. It's going to be scientifically proven. So, and, and you know, these are just people who, um, you know, they're on that side of the fence because they probably haven't experienced it in depth to the magnitude that I have and others who have experienced the attacks, the physical pain. You know, there's so many things that happen during sleep paralysis that just debunk the idea that it's just some medical or scientifically explained phenomenon. Yeah. Everybody wants to just explain it away intellectually, but exactly. I don't know, for my studies, it, something's happening, I think. Exactly. Uh, so I was experiencing even up until this pact that I made with the devil uh, on a, on an almost nightly basis to the point where um, when I was a kid, I would, I would, I would, I ended up sleeping with the, or uh, just staying up with the light on all night. And I had to go to school. My parents didn't understand why I was so sleepy uh, because I was afraid to go to sleep and afraid mm. to go to sleep in the dark. Um, I would try to get in the bunk bed with my brother. That didn't work because, you know, he wanted his space and he would call my mom and she would, she would make me get down and they didn't understand. I would try to explain something's bothering me. Something's attacking me. And I didn't really understand myself while I was going through until I became a, a believer. And I understand now that God has equipped me to deal with these demonic forces and these spirits to help other people get free. But going back to the story, I could share some, some uh, incidents with you. Just during this time, uh, there was one particular morning where Satan had ordered some spirits to get into my body. I don't, I guess it had to do with the, with the rap music and um, this particular time, something actually had moved by my zipper, by my pants and I couldn't move. So I'm freaking out and whatever was holding me allowed me to get one arm loose. And I just reached down to see what the heck is this by my zipper. And it was a hand. I would never forget this. But I have thousands of stories. I don't have time to share them, but it was a hand and it freaked me out and I would just pray. But anyway, ironically, I would pray even though I was in a in a deal with the devil. So um, after that cartoon aired, I was convicted in my spirit, right? I, I began to get convicted. I began to get apprehensive about this deal that I had made because it began to become a reality. Hmm. Um, so one particular night, we always had a Bible in our house, even before my mother became a Christian. Um, I said, I'm going to read the Bible because I guess I began to realize how serious this thing was that I had opened myself up to. Same innocent in the beginning. Seemed innocent in the beginning, seemed without really any consequences. I mean, as a young man, you know, you think about the fact that you're going to be rich, you're going to be famous, you cannot see any wrongdoing. All you, all my eyes was fixed on was the result and not necessarily the consequence of the choice that I had made mm. and the sin that I was committing against, against God. Yeah. So I began to get apprehensive and, um, to oh, oh just to backtrack a little bit even before that uh there were times i would dabble with a ouija board because you know this particular group said that that's how they found out how long it was going to take for them to be uh become successful they said that the ouija board told them three years and it actually took them three years and three months that was pretty precise to me yeah but nothing ever happened the times that i dealt with that ouija board it was me and the, and the guy who was in the group with me it didn't never, it never moved until one particular day. And I'm just want to add this on here to show the reality 
of the spirit realm, the demonic world, the reality of that world. One particular day, I, I was by myself and I, I decided to ask it, how long is this going to take before I see the success? And I will never forget this, Ken. Um, that thing began to move on its own while my hands, I mean, I, I remember I felt this, I felt this turning in my stomach first. I felt this turning in my stomach first. And when I felt this turning in my stomach, I couldn't explain it, but I had my hands on the on the little piece that moves. And all of a sudden that thing began to move on its own. It shocked me. It shocked me. Oh my God, it shocked me. And it scared the living daylights out of me to the point where I knocked it off my lap. And now um, it's really began to sink in. What have I done? What have I conjured up? What have I opened myself up to? So going back to picking up where I, I decided to start with the book of Revelations when I read the Bible post that cartoon, because everybody always said, oh, the book of Revelations is scary and you don't want to start there. When I thought there's nothing that can be more scary than what I'm going through and dealing with right now. Exactly. And um Read the book of, I mean, that just, I read the entire book of Revelations that night, mm. that night. And here's where the Holy Spirit convicted me in this particular scripture where it said, and those whose names were not found written in the Lamb's book of life were cast into the lake of fire where Satan and the false prophet should be. Now, Satan, and this is this, this entity that that came into my conscience and gave and began, I had this relationship with, identified itself as Satan, hmm. as Lucifer, fallen angel. So I cried out to God. I cried out to God that night. I said, God, I've done something horribly wrong. Hmm. I, I know it was you that gave me that, that, that woke me up to watch that cartoon. And I began to feel bad about the choice that I had made. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And I'll never forget that. God's a gracious, isn't he, brother? He gives us another chance and another chance. What was so amazing, yes, absolutely correct, Ken. What was so amazing is that he found me. Mm. Oh, my God. I mean, who would know this young boy in this little small town in this little small city is going through this and God showed me that he cared about me. Mm, yeah. And at that time, I didn't feel like anyone cared. Sure. Um, you know, I had people in my life that I knew loved me, but that was just something you didn't feel where I was from. You didn't feel care. I mean, you know, so after that, I, I literally heard God say, take those lyrics and burn them. Mm-hmm. And I knew that wasn't the devil because by now I've got tears streaming down my face. I'm convicted in my heart. And now I have a dilemma because wait a minute, God, this is my meal ticket, right? This is my key to success. This is all my lyrics. This is my music. This is my career. This is my, my shot. And you're telling me to burn it. So I went outside. And after toiling with God for a few few minutes, I, I said, okay, well, I don't want to go to hell, right? Yeah. After reading this scripture, I don't want to go to hell. And I lit, went outside and I lit the whole tire folder on fire. Because by that, I was addicted to drugs. I, I was addicted to nicotine. I was addicted to marijuana. So I lit it on fire and I'm just crying um, out there in the front yard. And I could feel two things, Ken. I could feel the presence of love. Felt like there was almost felt like there was an angel with his wings wrapped around me. Hmm. But behind him, behind that feeling, I felt this intense hate. Yeah. Because I remember this being telling me, this is a no-no. You you cannot back out of this. Yeah. So Went to sleep that night. Immediately, the rebuttal of the devil was within 24 hours. 
I woke up to friend, my, my friend who was also part of the group I was in, knocking on the door saying, hey, man, you know, I just came to get you because you we got a lot of drugs and I want you to ride with me. You know, and this guy never even never had drugs like that at, at that particular time, you know. Uh, but all of a sudden he has he has unlimited amount of drugs. So Satan's trying to keep his claws. He's trying to keep oh, his man. claws in you. Yes, sir. And marijuana was his medium to do it. Mm. He wanted to he wanted to get back in my conscious because he wanted to punish me. So, you know, only only I didn't give my life to Christ that night. I only just burned those lyrics. I jump in the car yeah. and uh, they be, and we begin to indulge in marijuana. And all of a sudden I feel these I feel like demons are entering my body. Mm -hmm. I can't even count. But, but it just felt so surreal. And I'm realizing I'm in the back seat and I'm realizing something abnormal is happening. Hmm. after those demons entered my body we were just riding around there were two people in the front i was the only one in the back music rap music was playing and this is where i realized what this particular type of rap music was right mm -hmm. what i saw and i'm gonna just try to explain what i saw i saw satan with his hand over a nation a nation of people Mm. through this music and he was looking up to God as if why do you even care about these fools mm. I saw that first and then the lyrics that came on the on the on the radio I could literally see the demon spirit that was that was the uh possess possessor of this particular rap artist and, and I'm gonna go even further and say, uh, I talked about this in my book, but let me let me just say this real quick. The song was a repetitious, which is what you call a hook in rap music, but the, the song continued to say, light it up, roll it up, inhale, exhale. That was the hook of the song. Mm -hmm. Light it up, roll it up, inhale. And what it was saying was talking about smoking marijuana. However, the demon spirit that was in this individual, when it said inhale, it wasn't talking about inhaling marijuana smoke. The message, the, 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 it was talking about burnt people. It was talking about souls burning in hell. This stuff is hard to explain because it's so cryptic. The lyrics have a dual meaning. The, the, the spirit that gives the, the, human being, the lyrics, knows the true spiritual meaning behind the lyric. So I just wanted to pause to point that out because yeah. I forgot to mention that in one of my other videos. Well, I think uh, one of the one of the lyrics that you got that, that uh, one of the spirits gave you was something of, there were several lines and uh, refresh my memory, but something about you're going to be known in hell. And there was a couple yeah. other uh, lines previous to that. Uh, you got the beat or... Yeah, so uh, <laughs> the the when it when it approached me on you no know, on that uh, Thanksgiving Eve, um, it's hard to 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 because uh, it, it had cuss words in it, right? So it was like I don't want to be victimized, but I know if I live a lie. I, I mean, it was just enchanting. It was very enchanting. Now, in the back seat of this car. These were other rappers that were already well known. And um, so I'm beginning to freak out and I get to the part about everybody in hell gonna know your name. I said, hey man, drop me off at home. Drop me off, I don't care. And, he was, and they kind of got agitated because they're like, you know, hey man, we got plenty more drugs. We doing this, doing that. Why do you want us? I was just like, man, just take me home. I don't have time to explain. So uh, they took me home and immediately when I got out of that vehicle, there was this presence over me and it was angry with me. It was full of wrath mm. and it was making this uh, sound as if it was breathing like, 
Hmm. Hmm. I'm freaking out. And then all of a sudden I felt my heart being constricted every five seconds. It was like this thing literally had its hand on my heart and I had this foul taste in my mouth. This mm. was a, a demonic entity. So it begins to antagonize me because of the, the because of what I did the night before. It begins to, in the form of a lyric, it says to me, you are a B to the game, and that's an elf and shame. Everybody in hell gonna know your name. And it, and it said, more inward out to jack you, more inward out to jack you, more inward out to jack you, you know. So, and what it was saying was, was more demons are going to, I'm going to assign more demons to you. Hmm. At that time, if, if I had a gun in the house at that time, I think I probably would have tried to take my life because how do you deal with something like this? So I sat down on the couch and this is the same spirit that brought me the lyrics. Now it's antagonizing. Now it's mad at me because I did exactly what I wasn't supposed to do. However, in my conscience, I said, Jesus, not verbally, not aud audibly, just in my conscience, I called on Jesus. When I called on Jesus, yeah. It, it caused this demonic spirit to stumble in what it was saying. And it yelled at me in the voice of a serpent mixed with like an elephant mixed with a lion's roar. It was beastly. And it, and it yelled at me to not say that name. And it came back stronger. And I said, Jesus, and it would yell again and it would come back stronger. And I would say, Jesus, and it would yell again and it would come back stronger. It wanted me to stop calling that name. Yes. Now, people say, oh, the devil can't hear your thoughts. I don't know why they say that. I haven't been able to find that in the Bible yet. But we have what we think, right? We have what we've heard other people say and we repeat it. This was my personal experience. So, and I have absolutely no reason to lie or to, this is my personal experience. And uh, I just want to say that for some viewer, viewers who may be watching. Who say, oh, the devil can't read your thoughts. Well, at that time, if you open yourself up to the devil, I'm sure he can read your thoughts. Because he's the one that puts them there sometimes. He's the prince of the powers of the air. Mm -hmm. This lasted for maybe about 10 minutes. I'm sitting being, you know, tolling with this spirit in my mind. I'm terrified. I re I'm regretful. I don't know what I've opened myself up to. I don't know what I've done. I don't know how to talk to anybody about this. So after about 10 minutes, the spirit goes away. Well, I was terrified to smoke any more marijuana because <laughs> I knew that marijuana was a gateway to the spirit world, not only marijuana, but drugs in general. Yeah. So, uh, cause that's when he would be able to, to, uh, to dialogue with me. And let me just say this, there is a particular artist who has died recently, who he made a song about this. It was a rapper DMX. And he had a song out called Damien, called Omen, where he talked about the deal that he made. So, you know, if anybody's interested in, in seeing that, I kind of, I made a video about it as well. Uh, so it's not for fetch. But anyway, I didn't smoke any mar marijuana for about a month, even though I was around it. I just would blow it out, kind of like Bill Clinton. I didn't I didn't inhale. <laughs> right. Yeah. Um, so after a month now, still not saved. Still in the world, but now just I'm in a neutral place. I'm no longer. Yeah pursuing this deal with the devil but i'm no longer but i'm also not pers pursuing becoming a christian i'm still in my sin mm -hmm. i'm having sleep paralysis i'm having attacks every single night i'm getting choked i'm getting clawed in my stomach i'm waking up i i, I at this time i'm i wake up and i'm on edge i'm irritable i'm agitated i'm depressed that's kind of a dangerous place to be in isn't it pastor when you're not on one side you're not on the other side, but you've allowed these influences, 
the drugs, Ouija board, you've kind of opened yourself up to that uh, demonic realm. Yes. So true. And uh, because I don't necessarily all that we have the protection of the blood of Jesus Christ yet, because I haven't committed my life to Christ. So these spirits are, are, are still attacking me. And then he told me, you know, that I would I would die. Hmm. And he begins to try to orchestrate by death. It's a long, it's, uh, but I'll get into it. But anyway, so now I'm not, no longer writing the lyrics. I said, I'm out. I want out. I don't want any part of this. And I hadn't been smoking marijuana until one particular day I decided and nothing happened. I was like, oh. So after a couple of days, I thought I was safe. And uh, I was smoking marijuana in my room and, and was listening to some rap music. And when I hit stop, because it was tape players back then, when I hit stop to rewind it, this is one of my favorite groups. Matter of fact, the same group that uh, introduced me to uh, this pack that I made. When I hit stop to rewind, because I wanted to listen to the song again, he was back. He was back. And the antagonizing began all over again. And I ran outside. And I tried to sit around people to try to combat mm -hmm. this attack. No, still, no one knew. And um, different ones in my family began to come to me. I'd just like to say this: uh, that, uh, uh, Anna, one of my aunts came to me and said, "I don't know what you're involved in, but my kids are waking up screaming your name." I'll never forget that. That scared me. Hmm. Uh, couple of my uncles one time my uncle had a dream that I that I had that I died and got killed so that scared me um so um here I am kind of like you said I'm in the, I'm in the middle and I'm still in my sin so I'm still addicted to drugs I'm still addicted to alcohol so I decided to go for something a little stronger as an attempt to escape my reality of what I was dealing with mm -hmm. uh PCP yeah, uh, how is that going to cause you to escape? That's just going to pull you deeper into. That's a good choice, um, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. So it was, it was, it was ironic how Satan brought that into my life. I was at a particular party, and uh, no one was smoking marijuana, even though it was like all over the place. And I'm like, well, why is no one smoking marijuana? Well, they were waiting on this particular guy to show up, and he showed up, and he started handing out these cigarettes with PCP in them. And I got into one of those circles. That's how Satan introduced me to PCP. So after that first taste of PCP, I was like just blown away. And I'm like, yeah, that's a good place for me to go and to stay because I couldn't hear anything uh, when I was under the influence of that drug. Mm -hmm. You know, only thing I heard was this was this crunching noise. If you I don't you you probably remember the show The Bionic Man. That's the sound when he would use his bionic powers. That's the sound that is released mm -hmm. in your brain when you use PCP. That's why sometimes they call it chronic or bionic uh, because of that noise. But anyway, um, so one particular day I was I was looking for some and couldn't find some. And I felt like something was trying to tell me this is not what you want to do. And I felt like it was God. Because everyone that was supposed to have it didn't have it. And we were trying to find it for hours. But I kept pursuing. I went past the, the, what was telling me, this is not a good idea. I went past that. Anyway, make a long story short, because my testimony is so long. Uh, we found some. And the minute I took just two puffs of this stuff and passed it, I lost. I lost any of my motor skills. And something black, a black shadow, took over my body. Mm. As it took over my body, the drugs were still being, still being passed around in the, in the circle of the people who were there. I didn't want any more drugs, Ken. Yeah. I'm, I'm in, a, in some state of, I'm past high at this point. Sure. I'm only, I'm only 16, 17 years old at this time. I don't want any more, but I couldn't tell them. I had no control over my mouth. And this black spirit was in my body. And when, when that thing came back my way, 
it literally took my hand, grabbed it, and forced me to smoke it. Hmm. I had absolutely no control. It was trying to kill me. Sure. So when the people around realized like, hey, wait a minute, something's not right with him. Because by now I'm stuck, my eyes are bulged, I'm not moving, I'm not doing anything. And they begin to panic because they thought that I was finna die from an overdose. Oh, dude, yeah. So make a long story short, I end up getting home. My friend walked me home. I woke up that next morning and when I looked in the mirror, I saw death on my face. Hmm. So I'm like, okay, I need to make a decision here because this thing, this, this, this is trying to kill me. Well, um, was it a few more nights after that? God was tugging at my heart and he was telling me I need to get saved, but I wasn't ready, Ken. I mean, I'm 17. I'm still a young man. I'm out here in the streets, you know, even though I realized that what I did, the rap music was wrong. I wasn't necessarily ready to turn away from a life of sin at that age. Right. Uh, so I went to sleep a few nights after that, went to sleep and I was high out of my mind, but I had a dream that the Lord had came back and I was not ready. I was not ready. It was a beautiful day. Oh man. Probably the most beautiful day you could ever imagine. It was, and if I would have to guess, I would say it was two or three o'clock in the afternoon. I was around my friends. It was the exact same scene that I would be in in real life. Mm -hmm. I mean, the same clothes that I wore was exactly the same as the clothes I had on in the dream. And we were getting ready to smoke marijuana like we normally did. And all of a sudden, lightning came from heaven and struck the earth. And it turned pitch black midnight, two or three o'clock in the afternoon. And Ken, no one had to ask what was happening. Everyone knew this was the return of Jesus Christ. Hmm. Everyone knew. Yeah. And ironically, everyone fled. I mean, there were people, there were people getting trampled. You know, it's a dream, but there were people getting trampled because there were, it was people just struck out running and they were trying to run away from the very presence of God, testifying to the scripture yeah. that talks about this in Revelation. And I hadn't even uh had any recollection of that scripture, even though I read the book of Revelation, but that didn't dawn on me. Yeah. So anyway, I ran in this house because I knew I said, man, I'm going to hell. I know I'm not living for God. And I ran in the house to hide from it. Hmm. And I was in there and a messenger comes in there and puts his hand on my shoulder and said, LaRon, don't worry. This is just a warning. This is a warning. Yeah. And Ken, I woke up. But when I woke up, I felt the anointing power of God standing in that room to the point where tears were just pouring down my face. Mm. And the background I come from, you know, I'm, I'm supposed to be tough. So, you know, I'm wiping because I don't like to see myself cry. Why am I crying? Mm. And then no, no matter how much I wiped, they began to just pour like water. And at that point, I just gave up. I knew I said, this is a call from God. This is a call on my life. God, he, he's calling me. So um, cut to the chase. I'm still in my sin. Um, uh, was, there was a guy who was used to be a friend of mine. He had done something, and I was kind of plotting on this guy, but I hadn't seen him in a while. Now, what do you mean plotting on him? What's, what's plotting? I was going to do him harm. Okay. You know, yeah, I was going to do him harm uh, because of some things that he had done in the streets. So uh, the next time I saw him, it was going to be it was going to be violence. Uh, but no one had saw him like in a month or so. So one particular day, I just got on the bus and there he was. He was in the back of the bus. Mm -hmm. But he 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 was different. He looked different. He had the cleanest face I ever saw. And he had this brightness that was on him. Hmm. 
And it reminded me of when my mother had gave her life to Christ. She had that same wow. look of look on her. And immediately in my spirit, I knew, I said, this boy have, have, have gave his life to God. And I sat down right next to him. He never knew that I was plotting on him. Mm -hmm. The minute I sat down, he began to preach the gospel to me. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> how, how, how ironic of God. Hallelujah. Yeah. <laughs> use the individual that I'm threatening to do violence and harm to, to win me to the kingdom of God. Yes. One thing I always say about God, he always takes the route that mocks his will to achieve his will. Yeah, good. He always takes the route that that mocks his will to achieve his will. In other words, God always goes the direction that says, oh, this can't be done. This is impossible. That's the very route that he always takes because it intensifies his glory, right? Yeah. So I sit, I sit down and he's telling me he's given his life to Christ. He's repented of his sins and I need to do the same thing. And he preached the gospel that Jesus so loved me that he died. He gave his only begotten son that whosoever, I mean, this guy is preaching. And I've done a lot of dirt with this kid. So I know this is, has to be real. He's legit. He's, he, he, we were in the same gang. We, we did some of the same crimes. We, we committed violence on some of the same people. And here he is at that time, 18 years old, preaching the gospel. Hmm. So uh, when he preached the gospel to me and he, when he invited me to church, I literally felt the demons inside of me tremble. Yeah. When he said, Laron, how about you come to church with me? Hmm. I literally felt the demons in me tremble because that was not just him asking me to church. I could see God using him, asking me to Christ. Yes, That was an invitation to Christ. And then I agreed. And of course, the devil tried to stop me uh, that Saturday night before Sunday came that I was supposed to go drugs. So I was at a particular place and drugs were just coming from everywhere and they were free. That's, that's how Satan works. It's that it's that last <laughs> hold. You know, he's going to hold you, to, you know, try exactly. to get you down on drugs the night before you want to go to church. Yeah. Huh? That's right. He was he was trying to hinder me from being able to go and get in the presence of people who were connected to God mm. and get in the presence of the house of God because he was threatened that he was going to be cast out of my life. Yeah. Amen. And uh, at that time, I was I was considered a traitor to the kingdom of darkness. I was considered a backstabber. Uh, that was what he would tell me all the time. Mm -hmm. So um, I end up, he he tried to pick me up, but I wasn't ready. So I just walked to the church because the blessing was the church was actually walking distance from where I lived. I didn't have a car at that time. When I walked to the church, tears again, tears, tears, tears. I'm ready for change. Um, what, 17, 18 years old. I'm ready for transformation. I don't want this life no more. I'm tired of drugs. I'm tired of nicotine. I'm tired of alcohol. I'm just sick and tired of myself. I'm tired of the devil in my conscience every time now. It's just, it's just was a miserable existence. I go to church. There's hardly any young people in there. I see him there. There's a lot of older people. And I sit in the back because I don't know about this yet, right? So they had a, a minister there, and, I, and I'll never forget the message he preached. He preached, who's afraid of the big bad wolf? <laughs> mm, yeah. Very powerful message about not being afraid of the devil. And it hit home with me. And uh, it hit home with me. So they had the altar call. I went up there, you know, and before when I, get, when I was walking up there, a, a lady stopped me in my tracks because she saw that I was crying. And she began to prophesy to me. Mm -hmm. And I didn't know what prophecy was at that time. She was telling me God wanted to change how I look. He wanted to change my life. And uh, I was a little skeptical, right? Until she said this, until these words came out of her mouth, she said, God revealed to me that he saved you from brain damage, trying out a new drug in your life. Mm. I broke. This lady did not know me. She did not know my past. How in the world does she know that 
just a few months prior, I almost died from a drug overdose. She had no way of knowing. So that broke my skepticism and I gave my life to the Lord. And I was raised at that church for the next few years as a young babe in Christ. And no one, I've never saw that lady again. When I joined that church, I asked, because I wanted to thank her. Sure. No one knew who she was. They, they didn't know who I was talking about. They didn't. I'm like, you know, how is it that no one in here knows this lady? I, I would describe how she looked and no one knew her. I never saw her again. So there may have been an angel, Ken. It sounds like it to me. Yeah. So I was at, what, about 18, gave my life to Christ, uh, became a young minister, got married at 21 to a PK, which is a preacher's kid. Sure. And uh got involved with ministry and preaching. And, and back in 2015, I started my own church uh, in Missouri. And recently I migrated to another city. And um, so I operate and I have my YouTube channel right now, operating deliverance ministry, right? Of helping people get free from these attacks. And I, I, I like to minister to rap artists, uh, and it's not just gangster rap. I mean, it's it's other culture, music too, heavy metal, and all the different genres. Because Satan caters to you based on your culture, right? That's the culture that I was in, so that's what he fed to me. But uh, casting out devils, operating in that in that deliverance area to help people break free of the power of the enemy. What are some of the areas you see, Pastor, that? Uh in our culture today that people uh, buy into, maybe they don't see the demonic, you know, Satan. I don't think Satan comes a lot of times with a pitchfork and some horns and a red suit or anything like that. He comes as an angel of light uh, Amen. to deceive people to, as you say, kill, uh, destroy, you know, uh, yes, sir. scripture in John talks about. So, what are some of the things that you see, uh, uh, not just young people, but e even older people uh, that are falling prey to the enemy or opening doors that could have uh, evil spirits, demonic spirits influencing their lives? So one thing I always tell, tell people that I learned is every sin comes with a demonic presence. Mm -hmm. um, and we are in darkness, right? The, the Bible says that Satan has blinded the minds of those who refuse to believe. You know, he has us in darkness mm -hmm. because how is it that we can walk around on a planet we didn't create, breathing air we didn't create, through lungs we didn't give ourselves, through ears that we hear, all the different things that, that we are not responsible for that we see on a daily basis. Hmm. However, you would think that that would be evidence enough that, that there's something more important to life than just waking up, indulging ourselves, right? Yeah. That something had to be responsible for putting us here. But most people don't think that way because they're in darkness. As I was in darkness when I was in my sin and I wasn't thinking that way. Yeah. So these are, uh, and through that darkness, Satan deceives humanity into believing that there is no God, into believing that you are at liberty to do what you want to do. There is no consequence. There is no afterlife. If you want to indulge in drugs, if you want to indulge in this, indulge in that, feel free to do it. And then at the end, you can die and rest in peace. That is a lie. Hmm. It was a lie from the pits of hell. There's a war going on right now. Yeah, and the souls of mankind are in the balance mm -hmm. between powerful deities, right? Between God and his adversary, which is also our adversary, the devil. Mm -hmm. So this is what I, I use this a lot of times because it's in the scripture. When Satan was kicked out of heaven, which by the way, I, I learned that he was a musician. Yes. <laughs> when he was in heaven, he was in charge of leading the worship. So isn't it just like him because he failed to infect the music industry and to take over the industry? Because after all, he's the God, small g, of this world. Yeah. 
So he runs that entire industry. You're not going to get in there without making a pledge of allegiance to Satan. And most people are starting to realize that now as YouTube and all the videos and things that are coming out. But when he lost his estate in heaven, the Bible made a declaration and said, rejoice ye heavens and ye that dwell in them. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down, but it's what we have to pay attention to after that, that involves humanity, right? Woe, woe, that's the word that the Bible used. And I looked it up, it means extreme caution to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea for Satan come down unto you having great wrath because he knoweth that he have but a short time. Mm. So I made a video one time called Satan has taken his anger out on us. He's a sore loser. Jesus defeated him on the cross. But if you don't believe this, then you will remain in what I call the matrix. You will remain in this illusion that you are in control. Although it is evident that you have got to die one day. It is evident that you are not responsible for your origin. It is evident that you're not responsible for the origin of the earth that you're on, the sun that you go out there and say, oh, it's a sunny day, but not thinking about how that sun is sitting up there bringing heat to a planet that you didn't create. So much evidence of God all around us. So until a person recognizes that Obviously, I'm not, I, I didn't create myself. You have to go on a journey to, to want answers and to try to find truth, right? Mm -hmm. Because the Bible says that God, the invisible attributes of God are affirmed by the visible things that we see that he has done. So if you don't know that, that, that you have something extremely valuable in you, which is your soul, right? Because the Bible says that uh, what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? Mm -hmm. And this is another scripture that God used to use to minister in my life. What can a man give in exchange for his soul? What shall it profit a man to gain the whole world and to lose his soul? Mm -hmm. So all those people that are out there making a deal with the devil, you're, you're exchanging diamonds for dust, mm -hmm. figuratively speaking. Because the Bible equates your soul to be more profitable than the earth itself, right? Yeah. So to, to understand and realize that we are in warfare between deities that are unfathomable to our understanding that we cannot fathom. And the only way out is through the blood and the sacrifice of Jesus Christ, right? All of us have heard of him at one point in time or another. And I always say he is the elephant in the room of every living person on this planet. Mm -hmm. Jesus, the savior on the cross, the elephant in the room to every living person on this planet. In other words, the obvious thing that is so important that we try to ignore, right? Mm -hmm. Because contrary to, to the lies of the enemy, when we close our eyes, we have got to go somewhere forever, right? We've got to go somewhere for all eternity. And this is why Jesus paid the price that he paid for our souls. And it's not that God wants to send anyone to hell. No, yes. because as he said in his word, hell was created for Satan and his angels. However, because you are not deity, you are human being, right? You don't have any preeminence in the spirit world where you can retire in your own place in the spirit because of what you've done or anything. No, if we don't have the blood of Jesus, then then it, we're, there's no other place for us to go. Sure. Satan will Satan will claim what doesn't belong to him because the Bible say all souls are mine, said the Lord. However, God is not going to force any of us into a relationship with him. If we don't want to, that's just so powerful. What you're what you're laying out there, you know. I, I know it says there in Revelations two. How did they overcome? By the blood go. of the Lamb, and the word and of the their, word testimony. their testimony. Yes, the, sir. The, test, the testimony that you're speaking. Uh, that that's how we overcome. Praise God. 
That's why I'm glad for any opportunity to share it, to inspire somebody else. And the enemy, he he doesn't want the testimonies going out over the airways. No. <laughs> but who cares what he wants? It's about what God wants. Hmm. It's about mm -hmm. it's about what God desires. And we are not intimidated by him because we are covered and protected through the blood of Jesus Christ, right? Yeah, we know that great, greater is he that's in us and he that's out in the world. We have the power, we have the anointing of the spirit of God in our lives and yes. the testimony in our lips and, and our hearts. Amen. That's right. So true. You know, when we get him in our life, then we're covered because we're no match as I was no match for these spirits. I was bullied by these spirits. I was I was beat up and tortured and tormented by these spirits until yes. I got under the blood of Jesus, right? And now I have the, the blessing of walking in the victory that Christ has given me over the power of the devil. Remember, he said, he said, I come that you might have life. He said, well, let me go back a few scriptures. He said, the thief cometh not before to steal, kill, and to destroy. Yep. And we associate thief to, to be talking about the devil because that's all he tries to do, steal, kill, and destroy. Jesus said, but I have come that you might have life and not just life, but life more abundantly. Mm -hmm. yeah. He also said, I came to destroy the works of the devil. So even though I had made a contract with Satan, the blood of Jesus was more powerful. It was more powerful, but I still had to make a conscious choice to choose Christ. And that's what people fail to realize. Every last one of us have to make a conscious choice. What does uh, I believe Hebrews said, he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a reward of them that diligently seek him. Yes. And just as you testified, you know, it talks about the anointing. It's the anointing that breaks the yoke. Yes, sir. It breaks yeah. the yoke, the bondage off of us. And yes. being that halfway, if there's people out there listening to pastor today, if you're on the fence, if you're halfway, you don't have that covering. You don't have yes. the spirit of God in your life. You have to make that decision. You have to Call upon the name of the Lord. Call upon yes. Him for deliverance, and and uh, He'll come through for you if you call upon His name. Hallelujah! Yes, sir. So I also wanted to just share um, because there were revelations through these experiences, revelations that God gave to me through my encounter with darkness, as well as my encounter with the kingdom of light. And uh, I wrote a couple books. But one particular book that I wanted to talk about a little bit was the one that's currently in print, this one here. God's Diary, The, the Truth About Life. That's great. Um, there was, as a young believer, I did a lot of praying and fasting as a young saint. Mm -hmm. And I would oftentimes, I would be in prayer, and I had an unorthodox way of praying. I would just talk to God as if he was there, which we're supposed to do, right? He, he is. But, that's, that's how you do it. Yes. Yeah. But I mean, what I mean by that is, uh, I know some people get like to get on their knees and close their eyes and fold their hands. I would just be sitting and just talk to him as if he was there because I knew he was. Mm -hmm. You know, even now, sometimes when I pray at service, I tell people, don't bow your head. I want you to open your eyes and look up and see God. Watch and pray. Yeah. There you go. Watch and pray. Because it kind of helps us when you close your eyes, it seems like he's so far away, but he's omnipresent. As a matter of fact, he's living on the inside of us. So uh, God spoke to me one day and presented this question to me and said, if there was something that existed that was everything opposite of who he is, would it be equal in power, less in power, or greater in power to him? When God asks you a question, it's not to get an answer, right? It's to prepare your mind for some form of revelation that you probably would choke on. And immediately after he said that, he, he told me that sin had a purpose. So I began to study 
and dig into it. And then the story of, of Adam and Eve, I'm like, and there are many people out here with these same questions. Like, God, why even put the tree of the knowledge of good and evil in the garden in the first place? Why allow the devil in there to tempt? Where was God when, when Satan was talking to Eve and deceiving her to deceive Adam? God, where were you? You're omnipresent. You're in super intelligent. Well, when you count up these factors, you have to understand everything happened for a purpose. Mm -hmm. God allowed it for a greater purpose. He had to. He had to. I mean, it wasn't like he was somewhere pretending to some, you know, uh, uh, attending to some other planet while Satan snuck behind his back and tipped it at him and Eve. No. Didn't catch God off guard. There's no way to catch God off guard. He He's in the past. He's in the present. He's also in the future. How can you catch him off guard? He's hyper intelligent. He, he's omniscient. He knows all things. So I began to go into a study and he began to unfold this revelation to me that will answer the questions about if God loves us, why are we in a world of evil? If God loves us, why does he allow us to go through what we go through? If God loves us, why did he even allow us to be here? Why did he even allow us to be tempted in the garden, Adam and Eve, to be tempted in the Garden of Eden? Good questions. Yeah, they are. And they're all in the Bible. However, they're under the surface of Scripture, which is why the Bible admonishes us to study. I always tell people, yeah, I wrote this book. But there is nothing in this book that is not already written in the word of God. But with this book, instead of you having to decipher the scriptures on your own, I got years of research and I'm deciphering the message of the Bible for you in a way to where a person who is not familiar with church or to a, for a person who uh, probably isn't theologically sound can get an understanding of some of the most complexing topics in the body of Christ. That's great. I think a lot of people have those questions, whether they want to ask them out loud or not. Uh, yeah. those, those are questions that, uh, you know, the, the scripture talks about be able to answer, you know, given a, be able to answer uh, those type of things, be given account to those that, that, you know, want to know things about the faith. And so it's nothing wrong with studying, I know the Bible talks about study to show thyself to prove unto God a workman need not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth and taking that yes, truth sir, and sharing it with others, teaching it to others so that they in turn can teach it to other people. Uh, and that's yes, the sir, kingdom yeah. grows by uh, spreading the word of God that way. And we really appreciate that book. That's, that's some powerful teaching in your book there. And uh, yeah. And you can get it. Uh, I, I got copies on my website, LaronBledsoe.com. I know there will be links uh, in the video, uh, but also Amazon. I'm a person that like to read on my iPad as opposed to having a bunch of books all over the place. Uh, so it's available on Amazon if you wanted to get it on your Kindle reader. Uh, if you want to get it on Apple Books, it's available there, too. Or if you want to get it directly from me, I personally sign each copy that's ordered from my website before I send it out. So just know, Brother Ken, you've got a free one coming your way. All right. Well, praise God. Well, we appreciate uh, your testimony, brother. That's uh, that's really powerful. I think it's in the day of evil that we live in right now as we see gross darkness covering the earth, uh, the light of God, the, the deliverance that you're involved in, deliverance ministry, teaching, pastoring uh, is, is so needed. So I want to thank you yeah. for your ministry, pastor, and for your, uh, your, your writing there. Uh, that's, that's, that's powerful. Some good, tr good truth. So mm -hmm. I want to thank you too, brother Ken. Well, well, thanks. We'll put all those in the description box so people can contact you. So that's yes, the sir. best way is, um, the best way to contact you is how is, from my website, LaronBledsoe.com, you can fill out an inquiry. Uh, we take prayer requests. Any Anything that is on your heart, you can feel free to submit it. I read every last email that I receive from my website. And uh, if I can reach out to you, if the Lord allows me to do that, then, then you can expect that to happen as well. Um, 
let's before we part, I just feel an anointing on you here, Laron Pastor. Uh, just yes, pray, pray, pray for the the listeners here. Pray. I, th- I think there's some people out there that might be involved in, might need some deliverance, uh, might might need a touch from God right now. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, we first and foremost, before we ask you anything, God, we just acknowledge your awesome presence. Lord, you gave this testimony to me as a gift, and I appreciate it. I thank you for Brother Ken, who has opened up the door and allowed the opportunity for it to be shared. But Lord, those who are watching, we are praying for each and every individual who's going to come in contact with this video, whatever bondage that they're in, whatever addiction they may be dealing with whatever even if they are in a pack with the devil right now god we know your blood is able to break packs to break contract demonic contracts your blood is so powerful and we release them in the name of jesus from every demonic contract we we bind it in your high and mighty name your name is above all names Hmm. you said that every knee is going to bow and every tongue shall confess that you are Lord to the glory of God the Father. Well, God, we pray right now, we bind addictions, we bind depression, we bind suicide, we bind whatever a person could be dealing with. You know, God, we don't know, but you know, and we set them free in the name of Jesus. Those who are suffering from sleep paralysis, those who are even afraid to go to sleep, even those who are being sexually assault- assaulted, because that's a thing too. God, we yeah. set them free in your mighty name right now. Allow them to feel your glory, your power. It's your anointing that destroys the yoke, God. Touch mm-hmm. them from the crown of their head to the soles of their feet. Shine the light of the gospel in their heart that they may find you, Lord, that they may find you, that they may receive you, Lord. You said it's your goodness that leads man to repentance. Lead them to repentance in you. So many people are hurting out here, God. So many people have questions about the Bible. So many people have questions about you. Father, give them understanding of your word. Mm. Let them know that you are a trustworthy God. Let them know that you are a loving God, that somebody cares. They may feel like nobody cares about what they're dealing with. Nobody cares about what they're going through. But we bind every live Satan right now in the name of Jesus. Devil, take your hand off God's children right now in the name of Jesus. Lord, show them that you care. Show them that you love them. Show them that you would rather hurt yourself than to hurt them. Because while we were yet sinners, you died for us. Come into their hearts, come into their mind. And we call it done. We decree it. We declare it in the name of Jesus. And it is so. Amen and amen.